What up guys, it's Chris with Bottle Cat Barbecue. First of all, obviously I sound a little different. Apologize, I am going through a cold spill. Um, it's just that time of year and just gotta roll with it, all right? So today I am part of the ultimate epic, not your average mac and cheese collaboration. There is about 15 to 20 channels out there doing mac and cheese videos and it is dropping today. So please, Go look around, um, look for the hashtag, not your average, mac and cheese or hashtag mac and cheese, whatever. I'll have a description down below of some of the other channels going on. It's going to be impossible to name them all, so I won't even try. But I will give a shout out to Kent at Daddy Dutch Barbecue. He's the one that kind of started this. It kind of spawned off of the pork chop um, collaboration that we did last month. Um, so this is just a bunch of people that love doing these videos and love cooking. I'm going to do some, a mac and cheese video as well, but it's not going to be focused on the cooking and the mac and cheese. But you'll see what I'm talking about when we get down to it. Today what we got going on is smoked macaroni and cheese egg rolls. It's going to be delicious. It's something I do pretty frequently. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So this is our setup of our ingredients. This is all you're going to need. What we have here are just regular egg roll wraps. Uh, have some barbecue sauce, whatever kind you want. You're going to need a bowl of water to help with the egg roll wrappers. Um, do some macaroni and cheese. Do whatever macaroni and cheese you want, or homemade or box. If you want to use box, I have some great ideas on how to kick it up a little bit, uh, make it barbecue style. I'll, I'll leave a video for that up, up above in the eye card. And we have some smoked, I'm going to say brisket, but it's not. Um, so I actually took a, a chuck roast and I did it just like a brisket. So you use whatever smoked meat you want, um, chicken, turkey, brisket, whatever you got laying around. And that's it. Um, I also have a plate here with some wax paper. That just helps with the process. So, all right, let's get these built. First thing I want to do is get your egg roll wrap and set up in a diamond in front of you. Take a nice scoop or two macaroni and cheese. Put it just shy of, of middle, of, of in the middle, right towards you. You don't want it directly in the, in the center of it. Nice big portion of it, just like that, kind of. If, if you make burritos, it's just kind of the same process. Like that, okay. Now take some of your meat, put it in there. Depending on what type of meat you, you're using, depends on how much you're going to use and whatnot. A little bit more. There you go. Now, my, my macaroni does have some barbecue in it, but I just want a little bit more. So, we're going to take our barbecue and nice little serving like that. Now, using your water, kind of dip your fingers in there, get them wet, and you want to put water all around the edge. This is what's going to seal. The egg roll wrapper. All right. Once that's done, take this corner closest to you. Tightly wrap it forward. Push it down when it meets. Kind of tuck your food in there and bring the corners in to the center. Nice little package there like that. Then just like when you're doing a burrito, kind of scrunch it towards you, make it tight, and then you want to Carefully, tightly as possible, roll it forward. Okay, something like that. Then you want to do is just kind of dip your finger again and go over the edges and seal the edges in. The water is what really seals the egg roll wrapper together. And that's it. Once you see everything's been closed, lay it on your wax paper and do another.
Now that the egg girls are ready, we need to get our oil done. Um, I use this cast iron with some canola oil. Use whatever frying type you want. Just want to make sure that your egg rolls are always completely color covered. So we're getting up to about 375. Use um, a thermometer like this or a candy thermometer. Or if you got one, use a, use a thermal thermometer. Whatever you got. Uh, so you want 375. While it's coming up, you want to get a draining pan. Um, don't use just a plate with paper towels. You actually want the oil to get off of it as quickly as possible. And if you just use paper towels, it's just going to let the oil set next to the food as long as possible. So uh, get something that will drain it. That's why I got this uh, wire rack with the paper towels under it and a cookie sheet to kind of catch the oil. And you're also going to need um, either a slotted spoon or if you got a spider like I do, uh, just something that you can work with. All right, so we are pretty at the temperature we're wanting. So go ahead and check your your oven. Or if you're using an automatic fryer, just check it and make sure it doesn't get too hot because you don't want this thing to burn. All right, now you want to work in small batches. Uh, I just have three here. And you'll see that using wax paper, it comes off pretty easily. Uh, work in small batches so you don't overcrowd. Okay, and get a timer. These are gonna go for about only about four to five minutes. Basically, you're looking for them to get nice and brown. And what you want to do is you want to use your spider and help them help them keep them separated if you need if you need to, just for a few seconds, just until they get started. Once they get fried for about 10, 15 seconds or so, you don't have to worry about them sticking. But you're constantly wanting gonna want to use your slotted spoon or spider and push them under the um, under the level of the oil because these things cannot rotate uh, there's always one side that's heavier you can see you can see that I try to rotate it it flips right back up so I just use this to kind of help push down all right so we are approaching the four minute mark we're about three minutes and 30 seconds right now you can see they're Getting nice and brown, but as long as you're pushing them down, everything is going to be cooked even. And you can pull these at any time after about three minutes. Just what you're looking for is that golden brown. Um, everything inside of it's already cooked, so you don't have to worry about anything being undercooked on the inside. But I'm going to call it. These things are done. That's what you're looking for. That nice brown color. So we're gonna let these cool down and try one out. All right, let's cut into one of these things, see what we're looking at. Look at that beautiful color on it. See the macaroni and cheese gooing out and got that fake brisket in there. Again, use whatever meat you want. Barbecue sauce, if you will, and add a little bit, which I will. Just add a little bit of barbecue sauce to it. Okay, let's give this a try. Mm. So good. You taste the smoked beef in there. It's macaroni and cheese. That's a childhood favorite of mine anyway. It's just two worlds colliding that's just delicious. So I do this all the time. Use whatever leftovers you want. I've used just pulled pork with some, some cheese and a little bit of barbecue sauce. Use whatever you got. Um, egg roll wrappers is something that I use all the time for any leftovers. Let your imagination go wild. And please give this a try and let me know how you like it. Um, again, check out all the other videos of, from today's collaboration of macaroni and cheese. This is just my take on it. It's something easy. And again, because of, of me being sick, um, the voice is gone. So I didn't even know if I, this video would be coming out. So here you have it. Uh, if you like it, please let me know down below. Give me a thumbs up. If you like all the videos I've been doing, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm going to continue doing all this stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a journey. It's an experiment. And I want you guys to come along with me. So let me know how you like it. And most important thing is keep on grilling. See you guys.